This conference will now be recorded. Welcome to the Django demo. So about me, uh, I've been uh, you know into Python for four uh, more than four years, and you know into Django for more years, and also you know like I'm uh, leading a team you know on web development and uh, doing more uh, things related to website development and also on backend part. And uh, for uh, regarding this uh, demo, so it is for uh, Python developers uh, who already uh, know Python uh, in terms of you know like you can say you can be a beginner because uh, most concepts like whatever needed for Django, I'll be you know covering in the courses like you know classes, inheritance, and sourcing like important uh, topics I'll be you know like covering you guys. So if you just uh, have some class on Python, it will be good. And if you're like uh, have you know like top the Python or if you are, if you are like uh, so good at Python, then it would be the best thing. You know you can uh, catch it so easily. And one more thing, we have a prerequisite like you know HTML. It's like if you know HTML, you don't have to know every element or every tag in uh, HTML. You just need to understand HTML and CSS. That's uh, more than enough for this one uh, to uh, you know get started. Because uh, mostly when you go for corporate, you'll be either working on a backend or frontend. So it's not always that you have to really know HTML, CSS. Like you have to understand it, but not to the you know like advanced HTML. You just need to know. And whatever HTML files, I'll be you know. Like going through the going uh, going to give you in, in in the course i'll be you know explaining you know what it does and those things i'll be explaining to you so you don't have to worry that is like a quick uh, you know uh, info regarding the course and those so we'll just you know like uh, start and see like what django is you know as you you guys are here so you might have known a little bit about django or someone might uh, you know have tried a uh, django bit. so we'll just go through and you know, like uh, uh, what django is right so agenda so before going uh before getting started just let's see like what uh, agenda we are going to follow today so first like i'll be starting with what django is because uh, that's the most important thing you know like you have to know what uh, you're going to learn and you have to know what you're going to deal with right and also how it is helpful and uh, you know why django framework because we all we have like so many you know server side uh, uh, scripts like you know we have node we have php we have uh, you know jsp and you know we we use java so let's and uh, so what uh, we are going to do here is like uh, you know we'll be like discussing about those and what is the career opportunity then we'll be giving a refresher and then we'll be uh, making a small demo uh, with uh, Django so here uh, demo in the sense I'll be like uh, discussing about you know how to create a small you know project with Django and uh, because like uh, at the end of this uh, demo I want you to uh, get a feel like how easy it is you know to make a small website using Django so what is uh, Django? Django is uh, you know a Python based web framework that you know like allows you to create a complicated and you know like website in an efficient way. Uh, why do they call it as a framework? See whenever you want to create a website you don't have to start it from scratch because uh, someone has already invented the wheel and they have done all the you know uh, work like authentication managing session and those things yeah, someone has already done it so why not use those things you know that's why you know like we'll be using a framework framework is a collection of functionality you can think it as you know like someone has written all the uh, main codes and which are like frequently used functionalities already it will be inside your you know framework so there what you will be doing is you will be taking those and you will be just just using it so uh, you know this Django is nothing but a Python based web framework which you know helps you in developing websites very fast because already you know uh, most of the functionalities are developed and inbuilt in Django so what we can do is we can just you know like install the Django package and we can just start using all the things and it gives you know like a ready-made component so because if you have ready-made component right you can just uh, build it uh, rapidly very fast for example if you are you know like if you want to build a bike on your own what you can do is you can just get all the components you know for the bike like a wheel engine and those things and you can just you know like fit it together rather than you know like a reinventing the wheel you know like a going and getting you know how to design the wheel so because it is already those components are available so what you can do is you can just you know like start using it so that's the thing here so these components are already available in uh uh your uh, framework django framework what these components these components may be like connection to your sql or connection to your database or user authentication session management and all those things will be already uh 
existing in your Django. So those things I you'll be like seeing, you know, when you go to the course, you will see like uh, people call it Django is like, you know, battery included, which means like whenever you use Django, these all features will be coming in. Like, you know, you just need to, you know, import the libraries, uh, you know, import the particular package from Django and you, you can just call it. And, you know, like the user authentication will be done instead of, you know, if you take other frameworks or you know, micro frameworks like, you know, Django or uh, like uh, plus that, that you have to, you know, like a uh, particularly you have to install from other packages it won't be included in flask but django everything is like uh, inbuilt so why is it used for rapid development so whenever we say about rapid development for example why do we have to worry about rapid development for example someone uh, comes tomorrow and tells you to create an e-commerce website for them and uh, for that you know if you want to build an e-commerce then you have to make sure that you know there is some authentication the user can log in and you know you have management panels and you have a admin panel where someone can you know like uh, uh, add products delete products add coupons and the security should be there because you are going for a, a e-commerce site where you know like uh, it's all uh, it's you know we are dealing with uh, money right in e-commerce site so security is uh, security is uh, pretty important when you go for e-commerce site so when you take django and if you build a e-commerce site what happens is yeah hello mukesh like uh, is it possible for you to um, if you say, yes sir or if you have any doubts you can uh, ask me yep. no sir okay nice. okay so uh uh, Mukesh, like, can you mute yourself? Uh, okay, fine. Uh, we'll just continue. Okay, so coming back to here. So what we call as, you know, like a rapid development. So rapid development means, you know, like these things are already inbuilt, like, you know, the main features. So whenever someone says, you know, create an e-commerce website for me, then you can just, you know, take all these things and, you know, you can just call this, you know, take this particular uh, package from Django and you can just, you know, import into your project and you can just get it done within like a week. But if you start it from scratch or something, it will take, you know, like more than a month or, you know, two months it might take. So that's why, you know, like uh, Django is like uh, more used and, you know, it will be more useful for rapid development because the market market is so competitive at this uh, point of time and whenever someone comes up with you know some ideas they want it you know to be done as early as possible they want the pro prototype to be you know in their hand as uh, you know as early as possible so uh, that's why you know like we will be using uh, Django so using this Django you can you know create the websites uh, so easily and also it, it will be very fast Yeah. So why Django framework? We have other frameworks, right? We have other frameworks like, you know, like we have Flask in Python. And if we go to other language like JavaScript, we have Node.js. If we go for PHP, we have Laravel. Then why do we really care about uh, you know, Django framework? Because the thing is, like whenever you learn something, right, you, you have to make sure whether the community support is really available for you. Because if you get some error and if you go to uh, Stack Overflow or somewhere to uh, understand what uh, that error is or you want to learn more or uh, those things then you really need some community uh, where you know like those people are active and they'll be posting tutorials they'll be posting you know like the error you got you know someone will be like clearing it on stack overflow so even for django you have a very big community because you know that uh, you know right python is a you know like most famous language and it has a, a huge community even for even it goes same for django so Django also has a very good community and the documentation for Django is like excellent. It's like really very good. And whenever you are creating a project on Django, a small project, it's very easy to scale. 
it up so what that means is for example you are making a very small uh, you know uh, website for uh, some grocery store and suddenly you know after a month uh, that grocery store you know like they got so many branches and they you know like uh, uh, they increase their investment and it became like a very big brand uh. so what you can do is that small website itself if you have made in chango right you can just uh, scale it up you can add more features to it very easily that is the meaning of high scalability and one more thing the main thing is like it's very easy to learn guys like chango is like really easy to learn and also we have discussed about rapid development right we can uh, develop prototypes and we can develop a real product very easily with chango and batteries included batteries included is nothing but what they are trying to mean us like batteries included means like uh, it has all the important functionalities inbuilt in the chango framework so you don't have to go and you know like install some other library to get that functionality for example if you want to you know like uh, communicate with the database chango provides you know like orms so the last but not the least thing is like uh, is like when you uh, know python why not learn django you already know python so you know like it's very easy to learn django also and django has a huge library and you know like uh, it's like uh, django has like inbuilt it has like many libraries and those things and also python you know on its own python can be used for uh, many things like uh, web scrapping machine learning image processing and also like scientific computing these are all the fields we can use python so whenever you are deploying a model you know like in uh, machine learning then uh, you know if you have django on your you know uh, backend and if it is like giving some uh, website or if it is running a website it will be very easy to make integration so it's like uh, all the stack will be on python so what that means is like uh, you can extend your you know uh, project so you are making a website like a uh, e-commerce website uh, the same example so on that you are uh, giving different different products so what you can do is like next step you can integrate machine learning uh, recommender system and you can just you know like uh, integrate with your django machine learning uh, will also be running on you know like uh, python and uh, this django will also be on python so your stack will totally be on python and the integration will be very easier and um, so yeah so let us see you know like what are all the career opportunities we have uh, if you see you know like on the right top you can see that you know uh, python on 2020 the most needed skill you know like most demand in high demand you can see python and then react angular you can see you know like django on the sixth place you know and uh, you know python if you know python then of course you can learn django and also you can learn machine learning you can learn deep learning so python is like a most important skill at this point of time and learning django is uh, you know it's not even uh, you know like uh, you don't have to think twice before going to you know learn django because when our people nowadays you know or uh, people used to use ruby on rails in the past and what uh, people nowadays they are using is you know like they are you know switching to django so even the big companies i'll be showing you guys like uh, which are all the companies using django and uh, you know what are their opinions on it so so that you know like you can understand you know in future the demand for django is like going to rise demand for web development will also be rising and people will be like bringing up modules which with which you can integrate the machine learning and all into django very easily so learning django is you know like is one of the you know like a best decision you could ever take at this point of time so if you see you know django is like a python uh, framework right so it's uh, you know made on python so you can see uh if you take a survey on you know like what are all the popular uh, frameworks on python first thing is like uh, numpy matplotlib and pandas and these things these are like related to machine learning because like uh, currently machine learning and those stuff you know it's at uh, peak and uh, the uh, you know hottest job on the market so the next thing uh, uh, right to this is django so after people are going to you know uh, numpy and machine learning people are going to django
because the demand for you know web development is high and how do you you know like people want the web development to be done easily and they want it to be efficient they want it to be scalable and also that security should be there whenever you are you know everything is like transaction is happening online and security for your transaction should be there with django it is already in build so you know implementing security is very easy but you know when you go for other frameworks then it is it is uh, not you know as easy as django security and those features are there it is not as easy as django so let us see you know like uh, anyways like you know whenever we take a career we just see right you know like uh, what will be the salary on it and uh, how 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 much we will we be earning and after five years or four years and how much we could earn so if you have four years of experience in django and you're like a uh, pretty good uh, at it so you know like uh, you'll be getting around more than 10 lakhs for sure if you have four years of experience in django and you're good and if you're just starting your career then you'll be getting around like four to five lakhs you know like uh, if you're good at django and uh, you know you are able to develop backend applications then you will be able to you know like uh, get four to five lakhs and even like if you're you know knowing so much into you know algorithms and those things uh you're good at software development then for sure like you'll be getting six to seven then the pay is like you know the base pay will be like four or uh, you know like five so now i'm going to give a refresher because like uh uh, some people may understand, you know, like uh, may understand web development completely. Some might be like new to web development totally. Some might be switching from other, you know, domain to here. So I just want to, you know, like give some intro to web development, you know, like and just it will be a very small uh, intro. And then once this is done, then we can just go ahead with the uh, Django demo and see like how easy it is to create a small uh, Django website. So what is a web development you know like uh, see the web development means like uh, we have different different apps right so there we will be you know like developing some functionalities and we will be adding new features or we will be bringing some product or uh, we'll be giving some functionality for example if uh, currently the trend is you know like everyone is at home and uh, every shop wants their own website you know for grocery shelling and uh, you know that's uh, you know everyone wants a website to be done for their own so in that case like what is the functionality so someone has to come to your website and they have to order it and they should uh, get it delivered to their home so those functionalities you are developing right you know so you know these all will be coming under web development so you know you can uh, go with that or you can uh, create some other website like a movie website where you can you know like a netflix or something those are all you know it will be like an example of web development so what in that case is like you are developing some product and people are able to use your product and uh, those product will have some certain functionalities which can you know give a revenue to the business model it's like uh, in terms of business okay so whenever you whenever someone uh, you know talk about a website then basically you know it has like three components you know it, it may have you know some other but basically if you want to you know put it straight and it will be like three one will be like a client one will be like a server and uh, another one will be like a database so client what is the meaning of client so here whenever you are going for amazon and whatever you are seeing right so when you are clicking on something you are seeing uh, banners you are seeing nice images so those will be all you know like it will be like a front end and uh, whenever you are clicking something and it is uh, your order is getting placed so those logic so whatever logic business logic inside no they will be on the server which is like a backend so here uh, if someone is not understanding about uh, what the meaning of server is so server is nothing but a company computer which is you know like uh, which is available to public so which means by giving its uh, url or ip address someone uh, you know with the internet access should be able to handle it so you know that you can uh, you know on top you know you can abstract a thing in terms of i'm saying in terms of web development this is a server but you know like uh, actually like if you go for networking or if you go for some other thing they, they have different uh, you know definitions like a server they'll have different types of servers so server is nothing but it will take a request from you and you know like it will give a response and it will try to uh, give you your service it's like you know like when you go for you know like a hotel right there will be servers so what they will do you will give some request to them they will go and they will get it done and they will you know serve you back right so there's the same thing so here also when you place an order you are placing an order the server will you know like uh, you know uh, get the money from you and uh, give it give the order to the seller and you will get the uh, product back 
and what is a database so database is nothing but someone has to store your uh, you know information right because you are placing an order in e-commerce site you know in amazon uh, now the festival you know like uh, the amazon festival is like uh, going and you're placing some order and uh, it has to know right you have placed some order what if you know just after you place that it forgets so you have to store all the data right even your credentials so for that purpose we'll be using a database so for websites these are three of the you know like uh, uh, basic components and this will help you know like uh, users to interact and uh, get the job Done. so you might have heard like someone uh, might be knowing uh, clearly about it someone might be new to it and uh, about uh, people always talk about front end back end whenever you know like someone goes out and say i'm a web developer people will you know like uh, ask like whether you work in front end or back end so what is the meaning so front end is like you know whatever beautiful you uh, you know uh, web page you are seeing that is like uh, made with the help of these technologies like html css bootstrap angular react and those things whenever you go for back end okay so it means the business logic so how the you know product is getting placed how you are checking out checkout process is getting done how your payment process is getting done so those will be you know happening with laravel and you can use java laravel is a, a framework of uh, uh, php so it is uh, also a famous uh, framework php as laravel and a cake php and those things and ruby on rails which we can use as a backend so backend means like totally a logic business logic and those things front end means it's like a you know the design it is more like an artist front end guy will be more like an artist if you take an example you know i can give a real time example like you know it's like a day to day example if you take a car so whatever you know your car body or you know like your car will be having a you know classy design so that you can consider as a front end so whatever that engine and whatever optimization someone does on engine and how it works and gear and those things will be like a back end so you know on the top you know that uh, fancy fancy stuff it will be done by a front end guy and the logic how it works and it will be done by a back end guy that's the difference here so you know you can't say like you know i'm a web developer because like even in web developers we have like a uh, three uh, categories like you know it's like uh, i think uh, most of you guys know so for whoever like uh, you know like uh, they don't know uh, about this one they can you know like uh, uh, understand from here so front end web developer means like they'll be you know like uh, creating the websites you know front end which means the design and those things and the tech stack they will be or you know the languages or uh, things they will be using is html css and javascript and back end people they'll be using php uh, you know java node js and python and full stack what is the meaning of full stack full stack is the person who will work on front end and also back end so they will be knowing both the technologies here so you know at current time you know people are always you know like switching you know like the, there's always a high demand for full stack people who are able to do you know like a job on front end and also back end which means like they they are in a position to completely create a full website on their own that is the meaning of full stack if it is front stack uh, front end means they will be only able to you know give design to your website like you know the login page but whenever someone clicks on the login it won't login because that should be given by a back end so if you if you want to be you know uh, in, into if you want to go get into you know uh, full stack it's a good thing because uh, you just need to know some html css and some you know like frameworks like uh, uh, react which you can learn you know like in uh, 15 to you know 20 days hardly so those things will you know like a full stack it will really help your career in terms of you know web development and uh, this is the basic thing guys like i just want to give a, you know like some you know whenever you, you you interact with your browser or some web page right how it works i just want to give a demo on this like you know it's like uh, i just want to explain because it will be helpful when we are going for the demo so for example if you're if someone is like clicking or doing something on your browser so request will be made to the server for example let us assume you are, you want to buy some product on amazon okay and you are clicking on that product so what it will do is it will make a request you know to the server asking like you know what is the price of this product and you know how can he you know pay the payment and it will give another it will redirect you to another page there you will give all your credentials and you will uh, click a button and it will be uh, you know like the payment will be done right so it will you know request the server the browser will request the server saying these are all his credentials these are all the info he gave and can you just place an order for him and uh, let the buyer know that he wants this product to be delivered to this address and server will do this and response will be like thank you we have placed your order so this is like a, you know like a typical uh, workflow yeah, sorry a typical uh, 
response cycle flow so now you know like we are going to you know like build a small uh, django project so if we build this django project then i think you will have some understanding of you know how easy it is to build because i don't want to just give the theory and you know like uh, uh, make you feel like okay like i feel oh, no, no django might be difficult or something it's not the case right it's, it's an easy thing so i just want to you know like make a simple uh, you know hello world project for you guys so that you know uh, you will uh, understand it uh, better so this is the workflow we are going to you know follow so how do we create it we'll make a folder which uh, you know whenever we create a project we'll do we'll make a virtual environment so that you know we can install django locally not uh, globally and we will activate the environment install django and then we will be uh, creating the creating a new project and we will test whether that project is working or not and then we will create a custom page that will be the end of the class and then i'll be you know like explaining the uh, explaining about the curriculum and you know those things so let's get started so first thing is like uh, i'll be creating a project it, uh, I'm creating a folder. That is the first one, and I'm using VS Code, guys. Like, uh, if someone is using some other thing, it's also fine. But uh, I'll be using VS Code, which is like uh, so easy. You know, to develop something, and it has like a lot of extensions in build. So I use VS Code for JavaScript, Python, and also you know for web development stuffs, and also uh, Node.js. Also, I'll be using VS Code. So VS Code is like pretty, you know, convenient for every language you use. So here, I'll be creating a virtual environment, which is the second step. So this thing, like people, you know, like wh whoever is new to virtual environment or never used one, uh, it's very simple. Like you know, you have installed uh, you know, Python, right? And whenever you install some libraries, it will be going getting. You know, whenever you use that Python, you can also you know import that package. But there are you know you will have you you are creating some project and that project has hundred libraries. Then you don't have to install it to your global Python. So what? you will do is you will create a virtual environment so then there you will be installing it so as you can see it has created a env folder so it will be just like your python folder so here also you will have all the python things and all the libraries whichever you know native to python and also it will be having uh, the basic libraries like uh, you know the requires and uh, other libraries like you know pip uh, you know pip package it will be having so from here, like you know, you can manage your package as well. And once the project is over, you can just delete it, or uh, you know, you can just uh, push it to GitHub, and it won't you know cause any uh, issues to you. If you if you are installing every package globally, then at the end, after a month or so, you will be seeing like you will have some thousand packages, and you have to delete one by one. You have to uninstall it. It's not convenient. So people always you know uh, it's like a requirement to get started with a virtual environment. So once we, you know, like uh, get into the course and we start using it, you know, frequently, you will get a hang of it, right? So we have to activate it. For activating, just go to script, copy the path, paste it, and it will be activated. How do you, how, how how did I know that it's activated? See, you can see here, right? This is the virtual environment name I gave. So I'm into this virtual environment now. So let me see whether I have any uh, packages or something. Whether I have installed some uh, additional libraries? No, it's not. So now I'm going to install Django. I can use pip install. So what happens now is so this um, Django will be installed only to your 
local uh, virtual environment which means it will be staying in this folder and whenever you're going out of this folder whenever you're not activating this environment you will not be able to access the Django so that means Django is available locally and whenever I'm done with the project I can delete it and you know like I can move ahead with some other project it might take a, a while uh, to get installed it has to download all the required packages and you know it's a prerequisite files and those things it will be uh, downloading once it is done we will just create a project on django and we will check whether everything is fine and then we will be going for a custom page before going that you know like uh, meanwhile when it is you know uh, getting downloaded let me explain you you know this one this, because like, this is uh, important for you uh, to understand so that you know you will have a much better you know understanding of what hap what is happening inside this uh, Django project. So here user, so it is me, which means my browser. And from my browser, whenever I am you know like in making uh, some changes, so I have created a Django website or something. And whenever I'm you know interacting with it, what it will do is, you no, know, I'll be requesting for a URL, right? Whenever you give Amazon, then you are requesting for the home page, which is nothing but index.html or something, right? Which uh, you know you guys might be knowing. So that what happens is like whenever you're requesting a URL, the what Django will do is based on that URL, it will you know make a pattern and it will give. You know it will give it to the view so view is nothing but it will you know generate the templates so you know django is called mvt framework you know they'll call it as you know like mvt design system design they'll say so m is model v is view and t is template so what happens is like whenever someone is uh, you know interacting with your website based on their url it will be redirected the based on url it will be going to different views and that views Views are nothing but just a, you know, like a folder. You can say it's like conceptual uh, system design thing. So based on that view, uh, it will be, you know, it will be uh, getting the template and it will be generating you an output. This thing, why I'm explaining you now before go going to the project is, once it is, you know, like uh, getting installed, then all these folders will be able to see inside the uh, starter project. Then you will, you know, like understand much better. So whenever it is, you know, like uh, making a template, it will take data from the database. So it is like an MVC, uh, MVT framework. So here, you know, the user, I can, you know, like uh, take a, pen and I can draw. So whenever a user is using a browser and they are making a request to your server and this server is uh, running Django, right? So, so what here happens is they will be asking for slash home. So what it does is like slash home, it will whether which, you know, which uh, view it has to give. So that will be like view one, view two, view three. It will give you two view one. So that view one will generate output, which is nothing but a dot HTML. So this is like a top view. So now you might, you know, feel like, you know, uh, you may not, you know, like understand it uh, fully. But the thing is, when, you know, this project gets uh, downloaded, you know, and uh, when we are able to, open this and you know when we are able to create a project you will understand this fully so i just want to you know like uh, give this view so that you know like uh, you will understand much better when i'm uh, talking about it second time because i'm not going to you know like uh put it once and i'm not going to start the project because uh i know like you know when we get started so some things we we need to you know learn it twice or thrice so i'll be you know like explaining them once it gets downloaded so meanwhile, I just want to you know, give this uh, overview. So till you know it gets downloaded, we can you know like uh, have a, a break. Once it's uh, downloaded, then I'll be you know like resuming from there. There you know like uh, then I'll explain about the folder and uh, the arrangements. Then we will just create a, a basic website, Hello World website. Then uh, then you guys can ask whatever doubts you have and I'll be like more than happy to uh, clear your doubts. So 
so if you have any doubts you can uh, in meanwhile you can just post uh, in the thing or conversation or you can just uh, put a private one or you can uh, unmute yourself and you can ask It usually takes some time to install and uh, as you know the meeting is uh, as the demo is going on it is uh, because of the bandwidth and those things it's taking uh, you know, a little uh, bit more time because it has to you know like download and install all the Django stuff right it has so it it might take some more time hardly I think one to two minutes then uh, I think it will be installed or within like 30 seconds or so I thought of having it installed initially and you know like uh, just uh, you know start with the project but I thought you know like uh, uh, going through the step uh, one step at a time and uh, explaining the flow I thought it would you know like make you guys understand more about you know how the project is go going to go and uh, how uh, each Django project will be created that's why you know like uh, yeah it's uh, installed successfully so now I think it will be done in a while so I just wanted to give the total view. I just don't want to, you know, like start it from in between or somewhere, you know, middle. And uh, you, you guys might feel like, you know, like uh, you, you, what happened at this point of time. That's why I'm giving a full overview. So it is done, guys. So now the Django is installed. So we are going to uh, create a small, uh, you know, a project, small project on Django. So for that, we will be using Django admin. Start project. So what it will do is it will create a template, like a boilerplate for you guys to work on. So I will name it as demo, and I will be creating on this folder. So I think it will. Uh, yeah, it has created it. This is the project name demo which you have given, and see like what are all the files it has given. So now I'll be, you know, telling you guys what these files are. Because if I don't tell you what the use of these files, then you may not understand the, you know, the whole function of, you know, how Django works and what is the requirement, you know, like uh, where we have to make the change and how it works. So first we have to check whether, you know, installment and everything happened, you know, in the right way. So what we will do is we will just check whether it is able to run a server. So further. You have to give this run server. So I'll be uh, explaining you why I have given manage.py and uh, what is this run server is. Once uh, I'll show you that, you know, like uh, the project is already working and everything is installed correctly. Yeah, so it is. it has started on our uh, local host at port uh, 8000. So this will be like a starter template for you guys like whenever you you know make whenever you install Django and whenever you create the boilerplate so it is you know best thing you know like to get it started and just see whether the server is running if you check a just a server check so everything is running fine so let's you know like uh, stop the server and uh, I'll explain you like you know what these uh, folders are so this manage.py which is on here so the use of this manage.py it is to manage your whole project and also to create local servers so here we have done right python manage.py run server so it actually created local server which was running on you know 8000 on this port 8000 port it was running and also we can create apps using this manage.py. What is the meaning of app here? So for example, if you have a very big project like Amazon, let us take an example. So that what people do is they will, you know, cut that project into small, small modules. So payment, checkout, explore items, you know, uh, place orders, and each will be an individual app. So to create that app, 
you know like we can use this manage.py and you know you can create individual apps and there you can configure each app so it's like an architectural thing you can put all the code in this you know main file only but you know like the thing is like if the project is getting big it won't be manageable so people always in software uh, you know like in software development people say it is uh, you know modularity so for the purpose of modularity and you know like keeping the function you know keeping the project clean and you know like scalable we need to go for apps so app is nothing but each feature you will be cut, uh, making into an app so here and then uh, this one wisgi.py so you have we have created a web server I, you know when we did this one uh, python manage.py run server we have i said you know we have web server is started and you know like it is serving the page so how it is done so because of this uh, whiskey.py so this is nothing but web server gateway interface so this you know what it does is it is creating a server okay so what is the purpose of that server that server will serve the web page so here what it did is it served this html page so it is because of this whiskey.py and what is this urls so i have told right so here so whatever URL you are trying to get, so whatever URL you are giving here, so on this I can put a slash admin, I can put, or I can put, a, you know, like slash home. So whatever URL I'm giving on the top, I said it will be routing it, you know, it will be routing it to that based on the pattern. So that is that URL.py file. This is this component is nothing but URL.py and views. So views is like, you know, views, view is nothing but a class or a function which you will, you will import and, you know, uh, which uh, this view uh, URL will be calling. So I'll I'll show the example. So if you open this URL, URLs.py, and you can see here admin dot site and URLs. So this one is like a function. So it is you know like uh, giving reference to this function. So what we are doing, we are importing this Django that contribute from here we are importing the admin and it is giving you know like a reference to that function dot site dot urls so what happens is whenever someone admin slash here and this function will be caught and whatever output is given by the other output will be a html file which is nothing but this the user going to make a same uh, kind of thing you know we'll be making you know in the second you will understand much better when i make it so let me go through the settings so setting is like a global setting whenever you are making some changes to your project and whenever you want your project to be you know aware of all the settings then you have to make settings here so whenever you, i said right uh, you you'll be using apps so everything is like an app so if you're making some amazon website or something that is the payment part product part and those will be like a small small apps so you have to you know register the app here which means like you have to you know add it to the list it already has these apps admin or uh, uh, we have seen that uh, uh, django is battery included which means like it is uh, you know it has all the functionalities right i have told you so these are the functionalities it has admin page it has authorization and it has session management it has you know like a static file you know it can generate you know and uh, provide static files and also it has middlewares for security purposes you can see right so we have middlewares for CSRF, which is like the most common, you know, security loophole, you know, in uh, uh, web uh, web development side. So these are all the important files. So how do we, you know, create our Hello World project? So to create our Hello World project, you have to go to URL. URL start. I told you, right? If you see this one. So first, whenever someone is interacting with your Django, first thing it will go to is URL. So I have to create a view. I told use nothing but a function, right? And this function will return a, a template, or uh, it will return some output which it which will be given to the user. So first thing the Django will be going to is URL. That's why we are coming here. And what we will be doing here is we have to import from Django dot HTTP. We have to import something called HTTP response because whenever someone is requesting something, your server has to give a response, right? That is this response. And we have to define a function. As I told, this is a function, and this function will be called whenever someone calls this URL, right? So here it takes an input called response. 
and what will be the output you know you can return any value but it should be the type http response and how am i going to map is i'm putting you know like uh, the same thing instead of admin i can put it like uh, i can just keep it empty also if i keep it empty then you know like whoever coming to our page like an index page it will be giving hello world that will make more sense right so now here you can see so what this is doing is someone is uh, going to your uh, website which is hosted you know on uh, django server and this django server you know whenever you are making some request this django server will uh, check uh, you know which url it is you know matching and based on that it will call a function and it will give whatever that the function returns to the user it is doing here so when you run it will start the server at uh, yeah it has started the server that same port so you can just you know like uh, refresh this one you can see here right hello world so that simple it is you know like uh, all we made you know we had a function which returns a value called a world and it has given the same value let us try something like you know like you want this to be like h1 tag you people might you know like uh it's like a basic one basic uh, uh html right so uh, let me just change this one and uh, once the server is it's loading now once it is done then we can refresh the page yeah so this one will be like a h1 tag so which means basically you can give all your html tags and all your html elements here only but it won't be convenient right how will you you know like a put a very big html like on like a have some 50 lines or 60 lines here it won't be a good thing so that's why we are going for a template so whenever we go for a template instead of returning one single line we will be giving a whole html file in this template we will see you know like how to make that change so for that instead of this http response we have to import some other thing which is nothing but a render from django dot shortcuts import render and first variable will be the response which you are getting and second will be the index.html file which you want to output to the user right but we haven't you know given any index.html right till now so we have to you know like uh, store it in a file you know we have to get this html file so where we will be putting it is we will be putting in the root directory i'll be making a folder called templates so inside this i'll be putting a html file so i have already taken a html file for the sake of simplicity so this file i'll be putting in templates and now if you give right so it you know like uh, throw an error as you can see i'll just save this one So I'll just cancel this server and just start it once. Yeah. Now you just go to this page.
trying to load that page it says like template does not exist so why it is saying i have told you right i think all the settings where you know like whenever you are making some changes or whenever you want your project to be aware you have to do the change here right so here you have something called a template so here you have to tell it right it the, whatever template i'm trying to serve it is in this folder if you tell it here then it will be able to give the index dot uh, html file so how you will be doing here is you have to import the os module and this is the base directory right so why do we have to go for os module my uh, windows system will use uh, you know like a forward slash but you know like linux and mac will be using a backward slash so it will create uh, you know like some somewhat you know like inconsistency whenever you you, you know whenever someone from uh, linux runs the same project so for that purpose we will be using a os uh, you know module to you know like uh, give the path so this module will take care of you know those inconsistencies and uh, those platform things related stuff it will be make uh, taking care of So here you are giving the base directory os dot path dot join, and uh, it is like templates. So whenever someone from Linux, uh, you know, uses this, it will be like a backward slash. Whenever some, whenever from someone from you know Windows, it will be like a uh, you know a forward slash. So I have added this one, and I'm reloading the website once again. So now it knows that you know what all the templates are in this template folder. So whenever you know this URL, whenever you call this URL, and from here you are giving this index, and it is like rendering this index.html, it will check in that uh, templates, and it will you know whenever it finds that uh, index.html, it does an output. I have downloaded the source code from W3 schools, so it's like a just a, you know, just like a template one. So you can see it has posted this template. So now coming back to here once more, we can see the flow. I have clicked here. I have given like you know whatever I'm you know putting like an index. So I I'll just change this name and show you. Uh, here now it's like an empty uh, you know empty string. So I'll put uh, something like index. And uh, I'll try index. I think it has to restart. It is still loading. Yes. Now you know, like it will serve the page. The same page. It is coming to index. So what this really means is, whenever whatever URL you are first thing is mapping here. So based on this mapping, it will call a function, and that function will return some output. That output will be going to the user. That's what I have given the user is interacting with Django server. That Django server, you know, like you are giving some asking some URLs, right? You are uh, here. I have a slash index. You are asking for that URL. And it will go to that URL, and you know, like it will view that, and and based on that view, like it will give the output. So that output is a HTML file here. So this is the you know, like a basic you know, hello world project with the Django. So all things changes we made is like only these few lines, and you know, like your you know your website is up and running here. Like all these, you know, these are like HTML, CSS, and it's like you know the website is running perfectly fine here. So only these few changes you have to make. Just think, you know, like if you want to add some authentication and all, like few more lines of code you will be adding, and your website will have that feature. That's why you know, like Django is called battery encoder. So it is very easy to get started and create websites with Django. So yeah, and then like if you have any questions or queries, you can just uh, let me know in the. Uh, conversation, or uh, you can put a message to me, or you can just unmute yourself and you can ask. So, whatever the question is, you can ask. Yeah, one more thing, uh, we can just uh, you know, like if you want, uh, 
I'll just give a course overflow, like what will we, uh, what will we be doing on the course, so that you will get some understanding about it, what the course contains and how it's structured. So this uh, completely, you know, like a project-based one. So which means, uh, first thing I'll be like uh, discussing you guys about uh, what app is, what URL template is. Like now, as it is a demo, I have to, you know, like rush up and show you the final product. You know how easy it is to create. But you know, when we go for the course, you know, like everything, we will have like more time to spend on. So we will see like what URLs are, and we will be doing some more exercise on it, and we will be giving assignments and those things. And we will see how what are models and migrations, and also we'll see like what is an admin and how to, uh, you know, like. Uh, handle your databases and how to you know manage your database you know using admin and how to add data to it and then we will be going through like what view models and you know how to make searches so basically our project at the end of our project we want you know we will make sure you know you are creating a real estate website so that website will be looking like this it's like a mock uh, you know mock pic so be looking like this so are you know they can give some keywords the bedroom and max price and state and whatever what all they can give and they can search and it will give a you know website and it will have a user registration user login so all these stuffs and security so by this you will get to cover all the django you know all the important most important things of django and whatever you know all the features django has inside so that's why you know we are going with the project view it's not only we are going to you know like build the project first thing i'll be explaining all the basics and then you know like step by step you know like the same thing we'll be applying on this big project so that you know like you can get a full overview on it so at the end you know like uh, you will be like uh, putting your project to the github and also like we, we can push the project to you know python anywhere or uh, so regarding the cost i think uh, you have to talk to the management many people uh, talk about it and uh, regarding uh, time and the course duration uh, i can give you an uh, info uh, it's like uh, it will be like a minimum of 30 to 40 hours you know the content it should be like minimum of 40 to 30 hours including all the projects and those and uh, those things you know it will be covered over a period of you know like one to two months it will be like between one to two months not less than you know it won't be like completed before a month so it will be taking one to two months and uh, the content will be like a uh, 30 to you know 40 hours at max you know like if uh, the thing is going well and if you want you know like uh, more uh, info then we can you know like uh, stretch it up and you know like this project itself like we can add so many features and you know we can uh, build it uh, clearly so that you can have a portfolio at the end you know what we want is like you should have a portfolio and it's like you should have a project portfolio what i meant is you should have this project in your github or your resume so that when you're going and applying for a job you can just show them and you can just explain it so and also we'll be giving some ideas like what all uh, other projects you can build so when you're applying for a job or something you'll have like three or four projects at hand so it will it is obvious that when you have that much uh, you know project at hand and that full world project then you will be having no issues and you know getting hired and all right so it will be a full project based one and uh, course duration will be like you know like 35 uh, 30 to 40 hours it will be going okay gotham i have one more question yeah uh, sure. if i am very if i am freshy to uh, django uh, then how can i do it for example i am very yeah. new to python language i am very new to python language okay can so... i learn django yeah, the thing is, uh, Django is like a uh, build on Python, which means like uh, you can see the source code, right? So here you are putting uh, from import, and these are all you know Python syntaxes. So, so if you know like little bit Python, so anyways, like I'll be giving a refresher on Python, so you don't have to worry. You know, like uh, I'll be covering the most important topics, you know, like which are all needed for Python. But uh, if you know Python, you know, like in a beginner stage, it will really be helpful. Because this will be like a crash course, right? You can't take like a 40 hours of, you know, 30 hours of Python here. I'll, we can hardly take like two, three classes, no? So it will be like a refresher and I can go with the important uh, uh, concepts there. But, you know, this, yeah. uh, when when it when you come to Django, then knowing Python is important. But, you know, when you're always going through these Django things, you can learn Python also. For example, like most things we'll be using is like classes and, you know, functions. You're not going to use so much of, you know, like a string concatenation and those things. It's not uh, so much of use and not writing logic so these things you have to know this is a list so you are making a list and uh, it is of uh, object or uh, you know type path so these things if you understand then it will be more than enough for you to you know like uh, go ahead with the course and do it 
Okay. How so then just was having other, how then yeah. was back other website uh, development languages? Yeah, the one thing is like you know, uh, you know, currently the Python, you know, the community is like uh, so good, right? You know, everyone machine learning, everything is like going with Python. And also, when you go to uh, you know Django, for example, I have uh, uh, shown this one, right? People who uses Django, this thing. So here, uh, you can see Instagram is using Django and uh, Spotify, Mozilla. So what Instagram they are saying is uh, when we switch to Django and uh, we are finding you know like the system is efficient and the system is able to scale up. So that's what their comment is. That's why you know like Instagram because like Instagram has so many users, right? So many millions of users and everyone is having Instagram account. So that much amount of traffic you know Django is able to handle. So people are you know like uh, are into Django because even if you Consider like Node.js, which is a JavaScript, you know, uh, you know, uh, framework, you know, for uh, you know, it's uh, Node.js is like a runtime. So Node.js is a runtime, and there we'll be using Express.js. So that one we'll be using for developing, you know, websites in in terms of JavaScript. So that what happens is like you can't do much, you know, like a process processor efficient or processor uh, hard uh, jobs. Like you can do I/O related things with Node whenever you create some chat application, but whenever you are going for somewhat, you know, complex and somewhat you know which takes so much of complexity django is like really better so in future whenever people are, people want to create a very big website in short amount of time and also like yeah. uh, that should have like all the things right uh, user authentication inbuilt so that they don't have to go out of it people always say there is like in, in python people use flask and uh, django if you take flask no you have to use uh, you have to import each library and you have to have you know uh, go to other libraries you know out of uh, your flask and you have to download and install and configure things but with okay. django what happens is everything's inbuilt you just need to learn django and you are like ready to go and you are ready to create but other okay. languages are not the same and yeah as i'm final year student of bscs so if i want okay. to develop a final year project in django then it would be good yeah, it would be good. Uh, yeah, the thing is, it would be good. But you know, like if you know, like a uh, little bit on uh, Python, you can just get started with Django. And uh, if you know a little bit HTML, yes, it will be like really helpful, actually. Okay, uh, my university you would have no trouble with it. Huh? My university will have not any trouble with Django and other thing because uh, mostly, mostly university like traditional ways to develop websites. Yeah, like Java and the PHP, right? Uh, you are trying yeah. to say. Okay. okay, but the current shift is like you know, like PHP and uh, Ruby on Rails. Like you know, the everyone is using Django because of its simplicity and Node.js currently. That's the shift here, and. Uh, uh, you know, but when you go for a job and when you're applying for a job, right? And if you have Django at hand, then it will be really helpful. It's like in terms of, you know, like project, you can see from that point of view, but in terms of uh, career opportunities, uh, Django has like the thing. Okay. Like you Thanks. can get uh, you know job easily. Yeah. Any other doubts? You can uh, put it in the chat box or You can just unmute and ask me. I'll just uh, you know, wait for some, you know, like two, three minutes. If you if you guys come up with some other doubts, you can just ask me. I tried to do Django for a few times, but my virtual environment doesn't create. Oh, like uh, which one did you use, uh, actually? Like uh, uh, how did you used. actually do? No, no, like uh, did you use uh, VNV? नहीं इसमें नहीं ना किया मैंने YouTube tutorials देखे थे सबसे पहले देखे Python मैंने install किया उसके बाद virtual environment create किया वो create हो जाता था लेकिन जब मैं उसके उस virtual environment का जो sample होता था उसमें मैं Django install करना चाहती थी वो होता ही नहीं था तो मैंने एक month पहले भी try किया था इसके अलावा काफी मैंने जैसे अब मैं ले रही हूँ ये try किया है लेकिन पता नहीं क्या मसला हो ही नहीं uh, I don't know. You, how yeah, actually, you are seeing here, right? ENV, this one. So, which means like yeah. I'm into my virtual environment. It but on the mean. top, when I yeah, when here you can't see the TNV. Yeah. Okay. So same. because like uh, there are so many ways to create the virtual environment, there are so many libraries existing, you know, like uh, to that. But what I'm using is like Python's inbuilt one, uh, VNV. So just this command, you can give, and you can just copy paste uh, this one. 
you can go to your scripts and you can just copy paste the active you know this uh, activate so just this path and execute this one it will be activated so mm -hmm. that's simple only two lines and then you will be into this and then you can install django here that's why you know like i also you know try to give because like uh, people confuse here so i just wanted to give a demo on this you know like from the whole flow that's why i created this okay. virtual environment okay a regular classes were occurring online uh like uh, like live classes right what you are trying to mean yeah matlab timing kya hogi subah ki dopahar ki shaam ki because i'm yeah, a regular that, student uh, okay that uh, i think you can uh, talk with uh, manideep and you know like uh, uh, he will give a uh, timings and uh, what whatever convenient for others and whatever convenient for you he will uh, make it arranged and you can just okay. let us know right so it will be helpful okay. we can coordinate right it's not an issue we just yeah, like sure. uh, yeah 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 any doubts any more thing no th no thank you so much yeah yeah sure you're welcome so if uh, there are no more doubts then i think i can uh, drop out uh, right okay then uh, thanks for coming to the demo like uh, you know i had a great time explaining you guys and you know uh, going through this demo I, i would really like to you know see you guys in the class and you know like uh, we'll go ahead uh, further with the course and thank you so much and have a nice day